I'm Hazel. It might be still Saturday today, but it is time to sit down and catch up on the WoW News of the Week, what I have been up to, and answer some of your questions. This week, Blizzard announced their latest secret project, WoW Remix Mists of Pandaria. This is also being referred to among players as Time Running and Pandemonium. It is a new limited time event that is under development for WoW, so it's not out yet. We don't have a date for it yet, but it is coming soon. We got an announcement blog out this week and PTR live testing has been running this weekend. The basic gist of the event is that when it arrives, you will be able to make a new time running character to level from 10 to 70 in Mists of Pandaria content and zones. You can earn extra powers and abilities in the world through special remix-only gems and a cloak, and doing content will earn you a currency called bronze, which you can use to either upgrade your gear, buy new gems to play with, or spend it for cosmetics for your WoW account. There are many new mop-themed things here to buy, as well as an opportunity to buy existing mop cosmetics, like old questing sets, dungeon sets, raid sets, mounts, rare drop mounts are available on the vendors, we have things like the Shaw of Anger mount, we have things like the Sun of Galleon mount. The main things that they have confirmed that they are not bringing back for this mode are items that were only available during the original mop release and have since become unavailable. So this is not a second chance at a challenge mode set or a Corcoran Warwolf or Siege of Orgrimmar heirlooms. You also will not be able to do the Legendary Cloak questline, but you will be able to get the Cloak appearances and gain access to Ordos on a Remix level 70 character, and those appearances and Ordos access will translate over to your Dragonflight account. It's important to note that this is not a classic era for Mists of Pandaria. These characters are using Dragonflight talents, Dragonflight class design, Dragonflight era races and classes as well. You can do something like a Demon Hunter, you can make an Evoker. Uh, you are not limited to the things that you were able to play back in Mop. You can make a new character that is anything that you could be currently in Dragonflight. And when the event ends, those time running characters are going to convert to regular retail characters. So this is also kind of an opportunity to level some alts that you might have been meaning to level. Other major things to note, there is no auction house, there's no professions, there's no heirlooms, there's no gray trash dropping or, you know, profession materials dropping because there's no professions. You can fly right away and you can dragon right as well in these zones as soon as you're out of the first couple of quests. So you can be level 10 in your 10 to 70 journey and be dragon riding around the Jade Forest. It makes getting around feel very snappy. You can use your regular retail mount collections. And of course, you're going to get more mounts in Remix from doing a few different things. Acquisition of these new things is partially from doing various remix specific meta achievements, but mainly from these bronze vendors. You have a bazaar in each of the Mists of Pandaria zone that is filled with vendors that will sell you various cosmetics for bronze. You get bronze from everything in remix. It drops from mobs, you get it from quests, you get it from doing achievements, you get it from dungeons, you get it from rares, treasures, etc. Anything that you're doing is going to be gaining you bronze, and you can buy many, 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 many things with it. The actual combat in Remix feels pretty fresh as you level due to the various gem abilities and procs. You have several different types of gems. Some of them are going to be straight stats. Some of them are going to be active abilities. Some of them are going to be passive abilities. You might recognize some of these abilities from other classes or from Shadowlands utility. And some of them are brand new. The leveling speed does not start out crazy fast, but as you play, you get these threads to drop that automatically buff your cloak. And those buffs are cumulative, so some of those buffs are for stats, and one of them is for experience gain. So the more you play, the stronger your cloak gets, and the more experience bonus you're going to have. And, mind you, this wasn't working in testing, but those cloak bonuses should transfer over to future remix alts you make. So your second and third character, if you chose to level more times, would be stronger off the bat and would be leveling faster than your first one. One thing that is not clear to me right now is whether or not Remix leveled characters will be eligible to unlock Heritage Armor on live. However, you can work towards other achievements like Pandaria Loremaster during Remix. The reason I'm not sure about Heritage is because one, I didn't test it personally, and secondly, Heritage Armor specifically kind of wants you to level the old-fashioned way, so I wouldn't be surprised if for some reason it does not work in Remix, but I have not confirmed that for sure. All in all, I'm very excited about this, especially because if it goes well, this is another one of those event formats that they could do with a different expansion and bring back at a different time with different things to collect. It seems like something that lends itself to reskinning and doing again. I hope that the limited time duration of it is not super limited, especially with all of the other things going on in WoW coming up. But it looks fun. Hopefully we get more info on when exactly it's going to be coming out soon. And I am looking forward to playing it. Other news this week, good news for Dragonflight meta achievement pursuers. The Tyvan mount, which had been previously nerfed in size, it had been made smaller than it was originally, is going to be reverted back to his previous extra large size in 1027. 
early achievers noticed that while he started enormous, his size was hotfixed down, and it is great news that his diminished presence is only temporary. Other things we learned about this week, Troll and Draenei Heritage Armor previews are here from data mining. We now know what the new heritage sets are going to look like thanks to WoWhead's 1027 data mining. This is the Troll Heritage Armor set. And this is what the Draenei Heritage Armor set looks like. Both of these sets were data mined in a couple of different color palettes and will be added to the game in patch 1027. Other stuff data mined out of 1027 that I want to highlight, the summer trading post items that are going to be coming our way eventually. There was swimwear, there's pool floaties, there's a rainbow beach chair. All of these things are super fun, and it is fair to expect most of this coming in June. There have also been Murloc outfits data mined by Wowhead that are fantastic and look like this. The source for these is not clear yet. It could be from the shop. It could be from the trading post. It's possible that they'll do another one of those things where they put one on the shop and then the other color on the trading post. But in any case, I need it. And then as far as what I've been up to, I've been testing Remix this weekend, so I'm very excited for that. I've been doing a little bit of spring cleaning, a little bit of Stardew 1.6 has been very fun. And then WoW is going to be busy between season four coming up. Hopefully we're within alpha soon and then remix whenever that happens. So um, I am unsuccessfully trying to just not get overwhelmed. <laughs> and questions for this week. 07DKI asks, do you plan on playing much of the Pandaria time running mode? And are there any new or purchasable rare drop mounts you are looking forward to getting in that mode? So I'm very excited for Remix, and I want to get all of the new things. And there's a lot of them. There's over 30 new mounts that have not been available in game before that we can get through Remix. So I want all of it. As far as the rare drop mounts that are on the vendors that were already available, things like the Shaw Anger mount and the Galleon mount, I actually have all of them already, which is nice because it means I can save my bronze for the rest of the stuff. It's going to be a great chance for me to fill in some gaps in my Transmon collection. And then Diana Archer says, did I miss something or was there not a prime drop on March 27th? Was this only a one year thing or? And the answer is yes, exactly. It was a one year thing. From what I can gather, they had some kind of 12 month agreement and we got 12 months of prime loot with WoW and that is now finished. So I suppose it's done. I wouldn't be surprised to see them do something again like this in the future at some point, but I think at least for now, um, Twitch drops for sure whenever there's like patch releases, they seem happy with putting those out, but I'm not expecting any more prime loot in the near future. And then Elian Gray asks, do we think we will be able to get the Razageth dragon riding customization for completing the raid on Heroic in season four? So yes, I am expecting the Razageth customization to continue to be available from all difficulties of Vault of the Incarnates. It wasn't Heroic only the first time around and I don't expect it to be Heroic only now. Um, when Vault of the Incarnates is on Awakened, it should still drop all of the same rare drops it had before, including the Storm Eater's appearance. I know at least one person that has been doing it on LFR ever since Vault of the Incarnates came out to attempt to get that skin. And if it hasn't dropped already, I hope it drops soon. <laughs> And that has been the week. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions for a news video, please leave it in the comments of the most recent one and include the word question to help me find it. I appreciate you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.